Hello and welcome back to my channel. For this week's painting, I decided to work not from a photo, but from an older painting, and I thought it would be cool to talk about how and why I chose to do this. In general, there are several reasons why you might find yourself painting from a smaller preliminary study as opposed to working from life or from a photo. The first is painting plein air, where you just logistically can't bring a large canvas, for instance, out on location, but instead you can pack a small panel to work from out in the field and then can work much larger once you're back in your home studio. The second example would be working from a model that you only have for a small amount of time. So you might go ahead and take a photo, but also go ahead and do a quick color study in person um, that's not going to take a lot of time, but is going to much better inform the color for your final painting than a photograph could. And the final example is if you simply want to duplicate a painting. In my case, this is the reason that I'm working on this piece today. Specifically, I want to duplicate this painting of a chocolate palomino um, because it's gotten a lot of collector interest, but I had been keeping it in my private collection because it was just really special. And finally, I decided I could offer it for sale as long as I painted a copy for myself. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, originally, I had kept this painting because it represented a total painting breakthrough for me. Um, in addition, it just showed how much I really love horses, and, and that's always been a really big part of my life. I used to be absolutely obsessed with horses. Before I got to ride, they were the first thing I just wanted to draw over and over and learned a lot from. Now, eventually, I got riding lessons and started being able to go to shows, and really, so many of my best memories from childhood happened while I was at the barn. So naturally, paintings of horses are going to be really important to me. But I think this passion really shows in the work, too. You know, I spent so long studying horses' anatomy when I was younger that this original piece that I'm working from here just came together so much more quickly and easily than I was prepared for. I loved how rich the color was, especially in the blue and purple areas of the horse, for instance, where the mane folds into shadow or that reflection on his hindquarters. Um, that's what really drew me to this piece in the first place, and I think that's part of what made it really special. Between really enjoying pushing the color and having a lot of fun with the brushwork, though, this piece just came together, and it was a real step forward. Um, that's why I've held on to it for so long, and now I'm excited to honor that piece with a new version. Interestingly, with this piece, I actually did find my original reference photo, but quickly realized that I enjoyed my first interpretation of that photo much more than the photo itself. So I wanted to continue to expand on the original painting rather than going back to square one and working from that image. The result is a painting that I think had even more interesting artistic license, even if the differences aren't major. If I had chosen to pull out the photo, I likely would have been a slave to it and I would have obsessed over areas where maybe I didn't capture every detail or totally nail the likeness to that particular horse rather than enjoying the horse that I wound up creating and enjoying all the liberties that I did take and how they really improved the composition of that image. What I do think is cool about what I did, though, is that the improvements I see here are largely unintended. So the slope of the horse's neck and the slightly more elevated, curious-looking head were both side effects of initial brushwork that I just happened to notice and really like, um, so I was happy to leave them be. Finally, it is time for the final varnish. Um, I wanted to include this video because this is a fantastic example of the power of varnish. Um, you can see just how much richness was lost in the darks as the painting dried out that the varnish then restores.
And here are the final two pieces. First, I have the original painting in its final form, and then I switch over to the new version. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more like this. I do have an adorable dog commission, um, a painting of a schnauzer that I'll be sharing next time.